Thank you for welcoming me, me into your dojo. I appreciate it. I know that what we're doing is from Brett's, uh, when he introduced himself to me, he said, what you're doing is miles away from where I am. So uh, the interest that you're showing in this approach to Aikido, I uh, appreciate that you opened your doors and your hearts and your minds to this. Um, I have a joint lineage. My first lineage with, was with Sao Tome Sensei. I was with the schools of Oishiba for about seven or eight years. <clears throat> Following that, I went to a dojo that was inspired by Tea Society, uh, Tohei Sensei. And um, about 18 years into my practice, I uh, was working with a beginner. And uh, you know how hard it is sometimes to get beginners to give you the kind of energy you need to show them my chemo technique. And, uh, he was reluctant to do that because there's an inner sense that when we commit to an attack, we make ourselves vulnerable. Coupled with that, he was a boxer. So he had a trained sense to know that when he committed to an attack, he was making himself vulnerable. So he was really reluctant to do so. Finally, I said to him, look, in order for me to show you anything, and I had my hand out and I grabbed my wrist, I said, you have to give me a real attack. So he said, okay. And he started choking me. So 18 years of experience, I've had a few techniques with chose, you know, more than a few. And no matter what I did, nothing worked. And I knew I wasn't defenseless. There were a lot of target areas in front of me. Both hands, both his hands were busy. I had a lot of options, but none of them were not violent <clears throat> and none of them were Aikido. So I had to reason, I had to step back because I knew that this gentleman was not going to give me something. He was not going to promote something to me that was going to make me vulnerable. He was a master martial artist, as we all know, no, completely knowledgeable in killing arts. So I had to say, what is it that I'm missing? What in my training have I not been getting? Because this is 18 years of investment in this. What am I missing? It's got to be something essential. So I went back and looked at the words of O Sensei, and I started noticing all his references. And this is not a martial art, this is a spiritual art. So much about it was spiritual that I had to reason. If this is a spiritual art, then there must be something about attack, which is spiritual in nature. So with that in my mind, I started on this quest to find what this is. So in that process, which has been now 10 years in the making, I have come up with a model. And this may be true, it may not be true, but for me it's a working model, it's what I work from. And that's the idea that the life force T, which is the central word of Aikido, is truly synonymous with love. Now the I in Aikido, oh, Sensei has said this is love, this is what this means, love. I know sometimes it means blending and harmonizing, but in this case it means love. So with that in mind, I said, okay, well, what is the nature of key as love? And I realized that when I love, I feel this movement of energy from my central core in a very open way. And if I can love unconditionally, this feeling permeates out of me, just kind of diffuses into the atmosphere at large. But if I start to notice things I don't like, I'll put up a barrier to those things. Like, like I don't really like that. And that political party, I don't really like that. And my neighbor who keeps me up at night, I don't like that. And that television show I hate. And these things that people are trying to make, all of a sudden, there's all these barriers for me sending out my love to things. But Believing that key is a connective force, because that's how we go through life, connecting through this key, connecting to each other through love, that there's a fundamental need for the connection to happen between people. Very few people live by themselves, completely dis, you know, dissociated from anyone else. So I started to see that, I started to see an attack as the need for love that's been held back so much by fear that it finds explosive ways to come out. So the Tao, Tao Te Ching has a line in it that the greatest good is like water. It gives life to the 10,000 things without asking it in return. But water, like we know, can refresh us, it can give us life. But if constricted into a hard flow, like a, under a waterfall or with a fire hose, it can be destructive. It can knock people against walls, it can knock you down. So understanding this, I started to look looking at the process of Aikido a different way. And you know, all through this, all through Sensei's teachings, he's saying Udo is love, Aikido is love, it's a way to reconcile the world. And yet what I found in my practice was I was throwing people, I was putting using wrist locks, I was using leverage, 
um, people that were stronger than me. I was finding ways of getting around their power to use my own power, which was generated from P, but it was a different kind of thing. So I started experimenting with, well, what if love is it? And I started to get some surprising results, things that challenged my understanding of what martial art is, and also challenged what I thought was my understanding of Aikido. So if you'll allow me to explore these things with you, um, I hope that you will find some insight that maybe you haven't had before, or that you will find some confirmation in what you already know. Okay? Yes. So I realized, I realized that in, in a conflict situation, there's going to be a reaction in our system to the perception of threat. So I've got this nice, wonderful energy coming out from threat. And my response that you're seeing here, I would call a shield. I'm putting up a shield because I'm saying, in a sense, with my intention, that's close enough. Don't come any closer. Okay? Now, that could be my default. My default also might be, uh, what are you doing? Right? Which is a withdrawal. It's kind of a retreat on that. It could also be, hey, you want something from me? You're going to get it. Okay? So I can give him back what he's giving me. Right now, he's giving me spear energy, what I call spear energy. And that's coming from intention. He's intending to pierce my central core with this energetic flow. That's the nature of attack. Okay? When I intend to hold him back from this, to keep him from penetrating my, my, the, my uh, internal core, this is a shield. It produces a flow of energy out here that doesn't directly connect to a center, except through what he's giving me. If I give him spirit energy back, it goes directly back to his center, alongside the conduit of the energy he's giving me. So in a hard style like Hito sense, this is a very effective thing because I'm going through the route that he's already carved out. He's dug the ditch already and I'm just moving through it. Okay, so you see that I missed it, right? My spirit energy went here and then it's not going into his central core anymore, so he turns around. If I keep it right on his central core, then we get a threat. Well, that's all fine and good. But we all respect this because as Aikidoists, we feel the power and we say, well, that's awesome. I want to be able to do that too. But then when you think about a real attacker, it's not so much, they don't feel that as love anymore. They feel that as being thrown or being bested, being defeated, all the things that those since they said Aikido was not about. However, I think that Brett might have felt something different. Hey! Because what I'm doing now is I'm going to trade that in with this other kind of feeling. So hey. now, even though I may be able to send this through you and knock me down, I hey. have that one feeling. Maybe there's something better. Maybe there's something a little softer that can be done. Hey. Maybe, maybe I can take care of my partner so that it really does come out as a way to reconcile the world. Right? So if his if his attack really is the hey. need for love, then I can give him what he's fundamentally looking for. There's a fundamental shift in how we can work together. I'm really drunk. <laughs> so there's my spear, there's my shield. You feel that? There's my spear. Okay, now it's kind of a battle. But you can see if I use the principles of Aikido, I can find my way into that and create a technique. But, you know, the other thing that Osensei said was, he said that Aikido's not technique. And he used to admonish the students, stop doing techniques. Do Aikido, not techniques. There was one, um, one of the students had watched Osensei do all this, all this stuff on the mat. He said, Osensei, what was that technique you did? And Osensei said, I have no idea. It was whatever I did was the calming coming through me. So the idea of takamusu aiki, spontaneously arising aikido, where does that come from and how does it relate to love? So, if I may, just from a preparatory, close the next that's good. Okay, so from here, if I'm giving him the shield, what I'm essentially saying is your connective need, not here, buddy, you don't get in here. Or I could say, I'm gonna give you some connection, it's gonna be right down your central cord, and you're gonna wish you had it. Or I could also say, why me? But I can say something else. I can say, hey, how are you? I respect what's going on. I can be with you. We're in this together. <laughs> okay, 
So now he's he's relying on me. Okay? His attack is essentially stopped right here. You know, if you're going to continue attacking with this arm, where would it be? Right up there? Yeah. But I'm moving in such a way that I didn't do a technique just then. I don't know what's going to happen here. And he gives me this energy. What happens with love is that love, in whatever form, and we talked a little bit about love and the trouble with the word love, because people perceive love as vulnerable and soft and something to do with, you know, someone of the opposite sex or the same sex as that you really sort of but there's other forms of love, like compassion. Compassion. Okay? There's generosity. Okay, so right now, uh, we would say in our practice, then your attack has kind of ended. Right, do you understand what I mean? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with you for a second, and I'm going to show you what it feels like for me to give you this energy. It doesn't have to be abrupt, but it's to your central core. Do you feel it? Now, you're giving me what kind of energy back? A shield. A shield, yeah. So what would, it, what would happen if, if I was on the, I just came to his front door, and he doesn't recognize me because I'm wearing a mask, or it's dark. And so he's got a shield up. He doesn't want me in the, in the house. But all of a sudden, you flip on the switch, and you see, oh, is that guy we invited from America? Now, not bad, right? But there's a little bit of withdrawal there. So it kind of felt like this. So you give me a sphere of energy into my center. And you kind of went, you kind of let me in. That's not bad. That's pretty good, right? But maybe even better is to say, hey, James, hey, come on in, buddy. Feel the difference? Okay. So this time, instead of thinking me as a threat, because his brain is wired to perceive this as a threat, right? He's going to transcend that and say, oh, it's Corgi, hey, come on in. But there's a withdrawal, see? And see how magnetically this brings my attack in from another direction? Because this right here is a deflection of my need. Okay? But if I send this to you, I don't know how this is going to happen. But I know this expansive feeling. And now I'm just going to come over here so that he doesn't hurt himself at all. So now I'm not throwing it. I'm actually lovingly protecting all things, including my attacker in that idea of all things. You see what I mean? So this is what I feel that Sensei wanted from me anyway. This, this is my interpretation of what I want to bring to my Aikido. It's truly the loving protection of all things. Now right here, uh, I'm tempted to throw because the attack is gone. If you were going to stabilize yourself and attack, it would go a different kind of way. So what we do in the kind of practice model I'm developing is not to uh, be a good uke in the classic sense, which would be, go ahead and do your technique, to be here and just hang out here and let him throw me because that will actually train you to take advantage of me and throw me, right? I'm going to keep giving you the same. And you see now how you didn't have to complete anything for me. I gave you everything I need. And suddenly you're being much softer. You don't need to throw. I'm not saying you, we haven't worked together, so I'm assuming you could be much harder, right? But you don't have to be. So even if I'm here, if you can think of me as someone who's just looking for your help, you know? I can follow that intention all over the floor. You see what I mean? So if you come in here, you give me this your energy. And you don't have to make an attack, but you can keep with the feeling of, I need your help. I need your help, don't let me off the hook. So in other words, if I, uh, okay, I'll help you. I'm not with you, am I? No. Or if I say, uh, okay, I'll help you. You know how that's kind of working against you? But if I can actually change my psychic state, transcend those fear responses, that being a spear, that being a draw, or that being, well, I don't know if I can help you, but I'll find somebody who can, a deflection. I can actually say we're in this together. Feel it? Anybody else want to try that? Thank you.